What's up everybody, Brian Mann here, Hands-On Auto Training. I wanted to share with everyone some information. Uh, here we have a 2012 uh, GMC Yukon, and I uh, just want to share with you guys using PicoScope and talking about triggers. Now, triggers are a super powerful part of the scope that I see many technicians not using. I mean, they just don't get it or they don't, uh, you know, they're not exploring what they can do with it. So. Uh, I am prepping for a uh, communication networking class that's going to be on the membership website in the near future. Premium members, our meeting this week will be on uh, some network uh, issues and also diagnostic tips. So we're going to be covering that, but I want to show you what I was doing with some research in uh, prepping for this. So you see here we've got our Go Diag breakout box. We have channel A and B on the high speed CAN network and channel uh, C, which is our green lead, is in pin one. That's a low speed can on a GM here. So we got our scope hooked up and we know for a fact that we're expecting a 12 volt wake up signal on our low speed can. That's our green trace here. We're expecting a 12 volt wake up signal. So we want to set up a trigger to capture this as it happens. We want to make sure we don't miss anything. This is a perfect example of using a trigger to your advantage. In this case, I knew the signal I was looking for was going to be above 11 volts. So I put my trigger around 9 volts. Also, we set the uh, trigger type to single. That means that as soon as the trigger criteria is met, the scope will begin the capture at the point that I have it on the screen, and it will fill up the buffer. Once the buffer is filled up, the scope will automatically uh, stop the capture. In this example, you can see we have 100 milliseconds per division. That means we have one full second of capture time in our buffer on the scope screen. So we're just capturing one second of time. That's it. It fills up one second, and it stops the scope automatically. That's a great feature. So we go ahead and click on the trigger menu right here, and we're going to put this to single. I just want to capture one, one go of this, and I'm going to be triggering off of channel C. So I choose that, and our threshold, I know this is going to go up around 12 volts, so I'm okay putting that up there. Uh, we're about, what, it says 9.2 volts right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn the key to the run position, and you can see what happens there. The scope stopped. It automatically stopped. You see up here we stopped, and our low speed had the wake up signal over the uh, 12 volts, and we are up and running. In the class online, we're going to go ahead and dive deeper into dissecting this, but if, we, if we're ever doing this type of thing, you want to hit the save button. Don't lose it, right? And we're just going to hit the save, and you can fill in the data later if you need to. In this instance, I just saved it because I don't want to lose this capture. But you can see here, our low speed network came alive right there. And uh, you can also see the high speed starting to turn on. Check this out. Uh, you we're expecting a two and a half volt bias. And at this point, oops, wrong, wrong cursor. At this point, and we can go ahead and zoom back out and see, this is an interesting step pattern. There you go. We can see we're stepping up to our two and a half volt bias right there. So uh, this vehicle is heavily modified with all kinds of uh, aftermarket speakers. And I think we've got two alternators on it. I had some other issues when I was going to program it that that's kind of why I had to scope out, but nothing big going on there. Be sure to check out the membership site. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know. Uh, links are in the description below. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.